greeting and welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are a community of faith in the heart of the Glebe, and we, are, uh, we seek to share Christ's vision for the world and to respond in the Christ-like manner uh, in the, to the present-day challenges. My name is Paul Wu. Uh, I'm a minister of the Congregation of St. Giles, and I'm also leading worship today. Today is Sunday after Easter, and that is according to the Western tradition. Uh, however, uh, in the Eastern Orthodox tradition, today um, they celebrate uh, Easter. Uh, so, and um, uh, given uh, what is happening uh, in Ukraine uh, and the division uh, within the Orthodox Church itself, uh, apparently, there are 100 million uh, Russian Orthodox out of 260 million of Orthodox worldwide. Uh, this, I would imagine, is a difficult Easter uh, for the Orthodox to celebrate. Uh, in my sermon, I will touch uh, on, on, on that uh, a little bit as well. But before we begin to worship, I'd like to acknowledge that the land on which uh, we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. The Algonquin people has been living here since time immemorial, and we are honored uh, that we're able to gather and worship on this land. I'd like to invite you to this responsive call to worship that is printed in the bulletin. In life, in death, and in life beyond death, the risen Christ is Lord. In hope and discouragement, in fear and in faith, the risen Lord Christ is Lord of the poor and broken, of the sinners and the uh, debtors, the risen Lord, Christ is Lord. In church and community, in our hearts and our homes, the risen Christ is Lord, so we gather to worship in his name. Let us sing hymn 466, Praise the Lord with Sound of Trumpet.
morning. Good to see you, Aaron. You feeling better? Good? Good. Um, I want to ask you a question. Uh, and I know that, uh, well, I, I don't know that if you still play with Lego. Do you know what Lego is? You do, okay, excellent. So what is the biggest, the tallest thing you have built with Lego? stadium. How big is a stadium? This big? Bigger? Bigger? Bigger. This big. Excellent. How about you, Hanka? Uh, a police station. Okay. Nice. And how tall is that station? This tall? This tall, that's pretty big. That's pretty big. I used to love playing with Lego when I was a kid. And I would try to like build as high as I can to see whether it will stand. And, and you know, it's not easy to do. And when you get to a certain point, you, you start to topple over. And, but you know, I used to love to, you know, use my imagination and, and to see what you, what you know, I can come up with. And today in your Sunday school, you'll be learning about this project that a group of people in the city called Babel that they have decided to build. And, and you will learn about why they're building it and how high they build it and what's the consequences of building it. But keep one thing in mind. One of the thing that, well, uh, let you know a little bit that it wasn't pleasing to God was because their heart weren't in the right place. So keep that in mind. As long as we keep ourselves humble, we can build big and grand things, but if we do so with a thought that we do this uh, to the glory of God, to please God, and God will look upon you with favor. So hopefully you have a, a, a great lesson uh, in that, that Tower of Babel. Let's come together, let us pray. Father God, we give you thanks for you have created us and you have given us your creativity and your imagination so that we're able to build many wonderful things. Pray that you will watch over our heart, watch over what we build, for we seek to give glory to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please join me in this prayer of adoration and also the unison prayer of confession. O oh God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we rejoice in this new day you have made. We praise you for the abundant life with which you bless us and for all the beauty that surrounds us as spring takes hold again. We praise you for your son, Jesus, and the power of new life promised in his resurrection. We praise you for your spirit at work in human history to restore and redeem our hope with that power of new life. 
O God of steadfast love, we worship you with the Spirit and the Son and claim your gift of new life. Even in face of any doubt or danger within the world you, you love. O praise, honor, glory be yours, O God, now and evermore. Amen. And our prayer continues in this unison prayer of confession. O God of might and mercy, in raising Jesus from the dead, you show us your power to defeat all that brings fear and sorrow to our lives. In his resurrection, Jesus promised to be with us and go ahead of us. Yet we confess we are sometimes uncertain about your promises. We doubt the power of resurrection for our lives upheaval and anxiety eat away at our peace. Forgive us when we struggle to trust you, to trust your goodness and your steadfast love for us. Our prayer concludes with the prayer that the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free from sin and sorrow. In Jesus Christ, God offers us the gift of shalom and may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ fill your heart this day. Our scripture reading, first reading is taken from Acts chapter 5, verse 27 to 32. Uh, this is uh, a scene describing uh, actually the second time uh, that Peter and the disciples uh, were brought before uh, the Sanhedrin, the religious court uh, of the day, and uh, their very lives uh, were at stake uh, in that meeting. And the second reading uh, is taken from Revelation chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. Uh, this is the opening vision of St. John uh, uh, in the book of Revelation. And Jen will lead us in these readings. Together, let us hear God's word. Reading from Acts chapter 5, starting at verse 27 going to verse 32. When they had brought them and they had them stand before the council, the high priest questioned them saying, we gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But, teacher, but Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey them. Our responsive reading is 150, and the refrain is number one.
Praise God for mighty deeds. Praise God according to surpassing greatness. Praise God with trumpet sound. Praise God with lute and harp. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with strings and pipes. Praise God with clanging cymbals. Praise God with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Tell God's wonder, sing God's worth. Hallelujah. Our second reading comes from Revelations chapter 1, verses 4 to 8. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever, Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us now sing hymn 250, I Dance in the Morning.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There's much upheaval in the worldwide Orthodox Church. On the eve of Easter, uh, in the Orthodox tradition, the church finds itself hopelessly divided over the, the Russian invasion in Ukraine. Kirill, the patriarch of the Russian Orthodox Church, is openly supportive of Putin's war, describing it as a bulwark against the decadent West. Kirill also claimed Ukraine as an indivisible part of his spiritual jurisdiction. Whereas Putin may see his special operation in Ukraine uh, as a political restoration uh, to the former glory of the Soviet Empire, Kirill, the patriarch of Moscow, seems to see the war as a crusade. The position that Kirill has taken has enraged the Orthodox churches outside of Russia. Bartholomew, the Constantinople-based uh, ecumenical patriarch uh, who acts as um, so-called the first among equals uh, in the Orthodox world, uh, has already condemned Kirill uh, for his support of the war. However, since the Orthodox Church uh, is loosely organized uh, in autonomous blocks. There isn't much that Bartholomew could actually do to Kirill, and not, nor to stop the war, even for a little while, even during the Easter celebration. Reverend Taras uh, Komish, a senior lecturer in theology uh, and uh, at the Liverpool Hope University, uh, and also uh, a member of the Ukrainian Byzantine, Byzantine Rite uh, Catholic Church, describes the mood of the 100 or million or so members of the Russian Orthodox Church. And this is what he told Reuters uh, in the telephone interview recently. Kirill has simply discredited, discredited the church more people want to speak out in Russia, but are afraid. I guess I could understand their fear, even sympathize against a ruthless dictator uh, who holds all levers of power, uh, who has demonstrated uh, an absolute willingness to put down any dissent even to the point of killing dissenters, who would have the courage to speak out, to stand firm? And that is why the story we read uh, in the scripture passage today, uh, describing the scene of the disciple of Jesus showing remarkable courage uh, before the court of St. Hedron, and this story is truly astounding. The church in Jerusalem was in its infancy. The disciples of Jesus has emerged post-resurrection as nascent leaders of a fast-growing movement, and some were calling it the way. They were openly proclaiming the gospel that Jesus uh, the good news that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, crucified on the cross, but now raised from the dead. What's even more unbearable uh, to the religious authority of the day uh, was these disciples of Jesus and now called apostles uh, were doing so openly in the temple courts 
and, and many were flocking to them. So the high priest and his cronies uh, had them arrested and thrown in jail about to be tried. However, in the middle of the night, an angel of the Lord came and, and opened the jail door. The apostles did not flee. Rather, they went back out to the temple court uh, again and resumed teaching the people. After much confusion and back and forth, the apostles were finally brought before uh, the, the Sanhedrin to be questioned by Caiaphas, the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach this name, he said. And yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. That is the same Caiaphas who sent Jesus to Pontius Pilate to be tried for treason. That is the same high priest who made numerous false accusations against Jesus before Herod. That is the same religious authority and that so inflamed the crowd in shouting crucify. Of course, he and his associate, them, they are guilty of this man's blood, this man being Jesus. No, they couldn't even mention his name as if uh, by mere doing so, it would somehow bring misfortune or, or mentioning this name was beneath them. Caiaphas and his associates had engineered the death of Jesus. And they would have given no second thought to put down Peter and the rest of the apostles. And now Peter. Peter, who had not too long ago denied even knowing Jesus, three times in the courtyard of the high priest. Peter now is the one that led the reply. We must obey God rather than human being. We must. No ifs, buts, should, or may, but we must. These once frightened disciples who were not too long ago cowering behind a closed door have now emerged from hiding as fears and fearless apostles. In the face of persecution, arrest, and their own possible martyrdom, they could not stop talking and singing and proclaiming Jesus. We must, they said. What happened? Who or what had engineered that transformation? The answer is faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What changed these cowering disciples into brave apostles was the conviction that their crucified Lord is alive. Death did not defeat him. Therefore, there was no reason to fear anything, not even death. What had transformed these disciples was the same truth that has propelled giants of the Christian faith, people like Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela, and Desmond Tutu. The same truth that also raises up men and women, uh, average, ordinary men and women, to live their lives with courage, compassion, faith, and hope in the midst of suffering, of illness, oppression, and injustice. 
The truth of the Easter message is this. Love is stronger than hate. Life is stronger than death. The battle has been won, and Jesus Christ is alive. Hallelujah. Praise be to God, who is the Alpha and the Omega, who is and was and is to come, the Almighty. The Apostle John, in the book of Revelation, has given us that self-description of God, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last Greek alphabet, signifying the beginning and the end. Capping that self-description of God is the word Almighty. Or in Greek, Pentocrator. Pento as in all, and kratos as in to hold. God who holds all things together, who is the ruler of all. It's as if that should God somehow be unwinded, all creation will fall apart. Should God cease, all will cease. I don't know how the Orthodox Christians around the world could celebrate their Easter today. In the backdrop of much killing and death in Mariupol, in Donbass, and other regions of Ukraine, perhaps they could simply look up. Orthodox cathedrals are mostly built with large dome over the sanctuary. And many of the domes have this similar and a familiar painting or mosaic sometimes of Christ's pentacractor. You will see an image of that, uh, Christ's pentacractor. It depicting Jesus seated in power and glory and surrounded by circles and circles and circles of, uh, 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 of saints uh, and angels alike and grasping in his left hand uh, holding a book uh, with an inscription of Alpha and Omega and, and in his right hand uh, a, a uh, imparting blessing, uh, a symbol, uh, a gesture of blessing. And perhaps these Orthodox worshipers uh, could simply look up or look around as the same image would appear in their icons as well. Or they can simply recall uh, that picture in their mind uh, of the gaze of Christ's pentacractor, looking down beneficently and powerfully upon them. Perhaps they could remember and find the courage within them to do the right thing. Perhaps they could take a page out of the Presbyterian Church in Canada, which in 1954, had made this declaration of faith concerning church and nation. This is the opening paragraph of that declaration, what it states. The one holy triune God, sovereign creator and redeemer has declared and established his kingdom over all powers in heaven and earth by the incarnation, death, and the resurrection of Jesus, and by his exaltation to the right hand of the Father, all things have been made subject to him, so that even age-long evil is overcome. 
for good. We worship and obey Jesus Christ as Lord of Lords and King of Kings, Judge and Governor among the nations. He is both the head of the church, although their functions under him are to be differentiated and their relationships to him are not to be confused. Now, in the section titled, The Church and Tyranny, this is what it calls for. It is the church's duty to denounce and resist every form of tyranny, political, economic, or ecclesiastical, especially when it becomes totalitarian. A citizen is not barred from disowning any government or organ of power, which usurp the sovereignty of Jesus Christ, and indeed may be obliged by God's word to rebel against it. But if involved in such action, the church must remember that the weapons of her warfare are finally out of the world. That by the Holy Spirit, she will in any situation bear public witness to the absolute lordship of Jesus Christ and to the freedom of all people in him. I will leave with you this final section as encouragement titled The Final Manifestation of Christ's Dominion. The Lord Jesus Christ, in the midst of evil and sorrow of this present world, must be discerned by faith with the full assurance of our hope in him. He is coming again for the healing of nations and the perfecting of the church. In that day, when he reveals the new Jerusalem, his sovereign dominion over the universe will be made openly visible to all, causing every knee to bow and every tongue to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. As the Orthodox Christians gather around the world to celebrate Christmas, may the people of Ukraine be able to bury their dead, be able to grieve their loss, be able to find faith in their church and find hope in knowing that evil will not triumph and death is not the last word. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this following prayers of the people, I invite you to join responsively. So when you, when you hear, we give thanks to you, O God, for you are good, I invite you to respond, your steadfast love endures forever. Shall we try that? We give thanks to you, O God, for you are good. Good. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the peace and freedom we enjoy in Canada. We pray for those who know neither freedom nor peace, those living under oppressive regimes or in conflict zones, and those who have fled their homeland in search of safety. We pray particularly for the people of Ukraine, for their loss and grief in face of an unprovoked aggression. Give us courage to stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves so that they too will know peace and freedom. 
We give thanks to you, O God, for you are good. Your steadfast love endures forever. We give you thanks, God, for the many ways you provide for our needs, for air and water, for food and shelter, for work to do and rest to sustain us. We pray for your creation, too often at risk because of choices we have made. Help us care for the earth and all its creature and relationships. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for you are good. Your steadfast love endures forever. We thank you, God, for family. The families we were born or adopted into, the family we married into, and most of all, for the family of God, the community of faith that we join into. God, we also thank you for friendship, for friends who have supported us through many months of pandemic restriction, and for those who bring us joy and wise counsel. Help us extend the gift of friendship to those who are experiencing isolation loneliness or grief. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for you are good. Your steadfast love endures forever. We thank you, God, for your church and for our congregations and, and its leaders and for all who volunteer time, talent, energy, to the work we undertake in the name of Jesus. By your spirit, guide us as we regroup after months of pandemic, and inspire us with new insight into mission and ministry. We pray for other churches in our community and in our presbytery, and the sense of mission that guides each one into service. We pray especially for the two-point charge of uh, Elmore, Finch, and Grave Hill in the presbytery of Seaway Glengarry, who have lost their beloved minister, the Reverend Cheryl Gaver. May you comfort them in this time of loss. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for you are good. Your steadfast love endures forever. O oh God, thank you for the gift of your Son, whose resurrection empowers us to look to the future with hope. Thank you for the gift of your Spirit, who draw us into unity with you and with one another. Thank you for being our God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, for holding us and all creation together in your hand. Indeed, you are God Almighty forever and ever. Amen. Let us now sing hymn 248 the downing of salvation.
as we pass the peace of Christ, uh, I'd like to uh, invite uh, those who are joining us from teleconference, uh, if you can identify yourself. Can identify yourself. Jane McNally, good morning. Good morning, Jane. Good morning. Good to hear from you. And uh, I'd like to uh, also welcome those who are joining us uh, from Zoom. Hi, Jane. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see all the rest of you. <clears throat> yes, you're doing well in Barbados. I'm, I'm actually back, but I don't have a car. So I'm waiting for it to warm up a bit to take the bus. Oh, I see. Well, welcome back. Hope that we'll see you soon in person. Uh, I see uh, uh, Bob. Hi, Bob. And uh, I see Stuart. Hi, Stuart. Hi, Paul. Good to see you. How are you Good. doing? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm looking forward to having visitors. OK. That's a hint for all of us. <laughs> You're at St. Vincent's now. That's right. And you have your own private room. Yes. Yes, good. So, yes. And uh, we're, we're sure people will be visiting you this coming week. Um, I'd like to uh, ident uh, acknowledge those who are here in person and uh, uh, Heather, our music director, and Joe, uh, our organ up vocalist. And uh, uh, Nora, good to see you. Uh, Jean and Stan, welcome. Kathy, and I see Nick. And uh, Bill, hi Bill, good to see you. And Bob and Jen. And our um, uh, duty elder uh, for the month, Isaac, at the back. Uh, and uh, Justin providing tech support. I believe uh, Rob and Laura, they're traveling uh, these, these, this week and, and next week, I believe. Um, I see Jane Evan. Hi, Jane. Good that you're able to join us in person. And so, that's Jane's daughter-in-law, and your name is? Michelle. Michelle. Good that you can join us. And, uh, and Dong and Kay, and, and uh, Mary. Peace of the Lord be with each and every one of you. Uh, so the... Just a few brief announcements today. Uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m., there will be a virtual coffee hour by teleconference. This Thursday at 7 p.m., uh, note the time, uh, choir practice. Uh, I think that's April 27th. Oh, sorry, April 28th. Friday, April 29th, uh, there'll be a farewell discourse on Moses, Deuteronomy 29 to 31 by teleconference. That's at 10 a.m. And Sunday, May 8th at 10.30 a.m., we'll have Camp Sunday with Mark Hamilton, the director of Gracefield Camp. After that, on the 15th of May at 10.30 a.m., St. Giles Sunday, or it's anniversary Sunday, sorry, uh, Reverend Dr. Blair Bertrand will be our guest speaker. I'll just uh, draw your attention to one other item. For those of you who would like to be on a pre-authorized remittance or PAR, uh, there are forms at the back for you to fill in should you choose to do so. Thank you.
I, I, I do want to mention, uh, the, uh, uh, you will see in the bulletin, the session news. And uh, so the session has resolved uh, to add two additional elders uh, to the session. And so we have begun the process of nomination. Uh, so for this Sunday and the next two Sundays, uh, uh, the congregation, members of the congregation are invited uh, to uh, pray about this and uh, to think about if uh, there are any among you that you would like to nominate. Uh, the nomination needs to be done in writing. Uh, at least two people would need to sign the nomination paper and deliver that to uh, a, an elder, a member of the session, uh, or to myself. And this nomination period uh, will stretch uh, until May 8th, so two Sundays from now. Uh, and I will also be approaching uh, 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 specific individuals who have been uh, nominated by the session uh, to, to, uh, as candidate for elder and, and to also invite you uh, into this prayer. Uh, so just uh, the next three weeks or so, and just keep this uh, in your thoughts, uh, your discussion and prayer. As we uh, bring the offering forward, uh, in this season of Easter, we celebrate God's precious gift to us in Christ dying and rising. So as we present our offering today, let us give with a thankful heart, trusting that God can do amazing things through the gift we offer in Jesus' name. Let us now stand and sing the doxology. Let us pray. Generous God, along with our gifts, we offer you our thanks for your steadfast love. Bless these gifts and the ministry of our congregation and bless the mission we undertake as part of the Presbyterian Church in Canada. May what we offer spread the blessing we know to others in the name of Jesus Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Let us sing our final hymn, 258, Thy Be the Glory. i uh -huh. 
Go now in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you from this day and forevermore. Amen.